guys, and Laura Vitali. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I am so excited to share with you the condiment of the season. I know I'm a little bit late because it is midsummer, and I should have shared with you in the beginning of the summer, but you know what? It was worth waiting for. We're gonna make some bacon onion jam. It's very easy and simple, requires basic ingredients you might already have on hand, um, and it makes every burger, every sandwich, every hot dog, everything just much better and it is really simple but really will wow your guest. Um, so let me show with you what I've got going on. I've got some bacon. I've got it in my, um, what is this, my shallow Dutch oven here. It was on low, it, it was turned off. I'm not going to put this on high heat. I'm going to put this on about medium heat. Reason why I'm doing this is because I want to render out the fat of that bacon, right? So in order to do that, you start with a cold pan, you render out all the fat, you get the bacon to a semi-crisp, and then we'll remove it. You'll need lots of Vidalia onions, a good two and a half pounds. You'll need a little bit of brown sugar to really help caramelize and add sweetness to your jam. You need a little bit of beer or water. Uh, I'm going to use a combination of both. I've got some amber uh, ale here, which is what we have on hand, which we love, and it's good for cooking too. But like um medium lager would work great. Just nothing fruity, nothing really bitter, nothing like that. And then you'll need some salt, and then you'll need just a touch of balsamic vinegar at the end. Very simple things, but trust me when I tell you that, you know, cooking this low and slow, really developing the flavors in the onions and everything like that is what makes this so magnificent. All I'm going to do, don't worry if you're, you cut your bacon into bite-sized pieces and, and they all sort of stick together like that, because as they cook, they'll separate. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to babysit my bacon. Again, I want it to render its fat and I want it to be semi-crispy. And then I'll show you the next step. Bacon looks good. It's semi-crispy. Getting it out. This, like I said, just takes patience. It took about 10 minutes because you don't want to put this on high, high heat because you need to render out all of its fat. Because when you put it back in with the onions, you don't want it to render out its fat then because then you just end up with a really greasy mess. And we just don't want that. See all the fat that's in my pan? I want some of this fat to cook my onions in, but I certainly don't want all of it. I mean, if I were to take that out and put it in a measuring cup, I would say that there's probably like a half a cup of fat in here. I'm going to get it out in a bowl. Not all of it, but most, like I said. You can save it in a fridge. It'll solidify and then you just, just take a scoop out whenever you want to use a little bacon fat for your recipes and it would not be bad. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. But for this purpose, I don't need all of this. So I'm going to just take out most. I'm going to leave behind about three tablespoons or so because I have a lot of onions to cook. That's good. And now you see those little brown bits that are just stuck to the bottom of the pan. That's good stuff. And once you add the onions in, whoa! and they start sweating, it'll just pick up all of those bits. Let me get these babies in here. Good, good, good. Now at this point, like I said, you just need patience. We're going to let this go without doing much to it. Just going to put a lid on for about 10 minutes. And then after 10 minutes, we'll season them, we'll do what we got to do, and I'll show you when we get there. This is looking fantastic. This is what you want. It took about 15 minutes for them to slump down like this. I'm just increasing the heat a tiny, tiny bit right now just because I want to deglaze the pan with just a touch of beer. You don't have to, but it does add a nice little added layer of flavor. And it smells divine. I'm also going to add just a little bit of water. Right? Get that going. A really healthy pinch of salt. I know it sounds crazy because we're going to add salt and sugar, but you know, that balance is absolute, absolutely a must. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add the brown sugar and the cooked bacon. We're going to add that in here, and then you're going to cook this on about low heat for a long time, a good, I would say maybe 45 minutes or so, or until it has caramelized and turned into a beautiful dark color. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. And you'll probably just want to partially cover this with a lid, just to really trap in the heat and make sure everything just sort of cooks low and slow and delightful. I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. Don't crank up the heat too much. Let it cook low, let it do its job. 
That is perfect. It's been about 45 minutes and it was on low heat. I just increased the heat now because you see how it's just a beautiful caramel color. It smells really sweet and really lovely. A touch of balsamic vinegar. This does a couple things. Just gives you a little bit more color, but it also gives you, you know, with sweetness, which balsamic vinegar is quite sweet, it also gives you just a touch of tang, which is important because there's so much sweetness here. You just need a little bit of balance with something a little acidic and the balsamic vinegar. You can also use sherry vinegar if you want. Uh, works really, really well. And look at that. Now you've got something that looks like a beautiful caramelized jam that I'm telling you will make every single thing you serve this on infinitely better. Let that bubble for about a minute or two just for that like intense vinegar to just sort of evaporate and then you're done. You pop this in a container like a mason jar or something with a tight fitting lid once it has cooled, pop it in the fridge for a week and it's magnificent. In the thumbnail of this video you will see it served with a burger because listen to me, juicy burger, aged cheddar, a pile of this on top on a toasted bun is everything you dream of and then some. It's magnificent. So I encourage you to try it this way. I'm gonna have a little, just a little teeny tiny taste because you know, that's what I do. It's gonna be really hot though, so I just want a minute because remember, there is sugar here. Look at, look at that color. Look at that, just, it's just fantastic. You have to just believe me. It smells so good. Mouth. Oh melts in your mouth. It's wonderful. LaraInTheKitchen.com. The recipe will be there for you. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.